G'day, thanks for stopping by my video. Today I'm going to run a quick tutorial on how to make pop-up photos like these. I hope that's something you might want to try. Stay tuned. Hi again, I'm Ozzy Mark. So we're going to try and make some of those pop-up photos. Well, we're going to do an example anyway so that you can see exactly how you can do it. And if you haven't got the appropriate software, I'll show you where to get that too. It's pretty easy. Let's go. So to make a pop-out, what you're going to need is a photo that's taken um, where something's obviously sticking up out of the environment or sticking sideways. Um, and that could be things like this lighthouse or a bridge or uh, some kind of a tower or a building that's set alone in the landscape. So here we go. I've got um, two layers built. This is the photo layer and I've added a second layer here. Now I'm using paints.net by the way, which is a free software different to Microsoft Paint with much more functionality and it's free. The video, uh, sorry, the link will be down in the description. So what I'm going to do on the um, on this second layer, I'm going to draw a rectangle that's just an outline and I want the thickness to be about 40 because you'll see um, in a second if I draw this on here now, um, I'm going to just approximate where I want it. I can always move it later. Um, so maybe I'll open that up a little bit there, maybe a little bit over here. And um, then I'm just going to hit enter, which will get me deselected from that rectangle. Now I'm going to go to um, image, uh, sorry, layer and rotate or zoom. And I'm actually going to use this ball here that you can see and watch the rectangle when I move it. I want the rectangle to tilt over. So I want it to tilt about that much, whoops. Okay, I only want that. I want that to be 90 degrees. You can always just put that in there and go minus 90 and that should set it to, yep, there we go. That's at that point. Okay, so now if I want to, if I don't like that, um, I can always uh, just go to um, select the actual layer, click on it to select it. And what I want is this back line to be below that tower. So all I'm going to do is grab this middle section here, slide this down so that the tower is sticking out of the photograph. Okay, and that's probably going to do. So uh, that's okay for now. And then if I just hit enter, that'll get me out of that selection. So what I do now is I'm going to use my magic wands tool I'm going to select um, this outside area, which you'll see if I turn off the picture underneath is just the rectangle. I'm selecting that outside area and that's going to leave the inside area and the border still there. The reason I do that is I want to turn back on that image. I want to um, go back to the picture layer, not to the rectangle layer. Then I'm going to use my uh, eraser tool and actually make sure my eraser tool is a decent size. So in this case, I'm going to go up to about 100. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run around the outside edge of this quickly, obviously not rubbing out the, um, the lighthouse. So I'm going to go around the lighthouse and then around the outside. And obviously having that selection tool um, activated first means you're not going to rub out anything on the inside of the layer. So let's quickly go ahead and delete that. Okay, keeping on going. Just moving that along there. And around there. And around here, back to where we started. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my um, Magic Wands tool. I'm still on the picture layer. I'm now going to select basically everything. If it doesn't select what I want it to select, as you can see, it's left bits out. I'm going to increase the tolerance until it does select everything. And it's hopefully moving forward. Oops, now it's selecting too much. Well, the other way to do it, of course, is just to, um, to use a rectangle tool or to use this um, 
lasso tool, I'll use that instead. So I'm going to hit enter to deselect what I've got there. This lasso tool just allows me to select individual areas at a time. So I'm just going to start um, cutting that. So I'll press the delete tool and it gets rid of it. So we'll just do this fast. So there you go, that's done. Oh, I've left a little bit there. Let's just zoom up on that so that I can wipe that off. Go back to my eraser tool. I'm going to wipe off that little edge there, wipe off that little edge there. And I see this bit there. Righto, so now we go up to the lighthouse that we want to pop out of the screen. So the first thing we want to do here is you want to delete that line that's crossing over the lighthouse to make it look like it's going behind. I could just um, where are we? I could just delete that off there, or I, if it if the contrast between the background and the foreground of the tower was um, com, you know very strikingly different, I could just go to the picture layer and select the tower if it was red, say. But in this case, the colors are very similar, so I'm just going to use the delete tool, uh, the eraser tool, should I say? Uh, hopefully, I've still got that selected. Yes. So be careful just to go up to the edge. Whoops, and as you can see, I'm on the wrong layer. That's a good learning tool for you. Undo that. Make sure I'm back on the rectangle layer. Make sure that my um, hardness is quite hard because I want a fairly firm edge on this. And I might even zoom up more so you can see clearly. Right, so basically I'm just deleting as carefully as I can that edge. And there we go, that edge. And then if I zoom back out, you see it now kind of looks like the lighthouse is popping out of the picture. So I'll zoom back in because I need to get rid of that background. Okay, now you could try just um, selecting the background to see if it will delete by itself. Um, I'll do that and we'll see if it works. I don't think it will because the contrast is not different enough. So I click the magic wand tool. Click the background, whoops, and I'm in the wrong layer again. Let's go back to the right layer, try it again. And you can see if I try and get the tolerances right. Um, no, we'll go back down, see if that makes a difference. And see it's very hard to select on this image. So if I'm just going to click enter to get out of that. And I'm going to actually delete this by hand. It's, it takes a little bit longer but um, it becomes much more effective. So I'm going to zoom in even further. So I'm at 200% now and still using my eraser tool. Um, I'm going to, now I'll probably decrease the hardness on this because um, otherwise you can, it can look really obvious that you've deleted it. So I'm gonna go back to about 30% and start doing my deletes. Take that lovely curve there. Nope, the hardness is obviously too soft because you can see that I've left a bit of an edge there. I'm gonna go right into there and then start moving my mouse carefully down to the bottom. Obviously we want that stuff gone. You can take a bit more, uh, a bit less care with that. And I'm going back across to here I might decrease the size of my brush now because I don't want quite, I want a little more accuracy. You can see the brush is now changed. The circle size that is I'm talking about there. Okay, that's looking fairly good. Whoops, and you can see, and if you, uh, I don't know if you can see, if I zoom up you might be able to. I've actually taken a bit off the edge there, so make sure you undo if you accidentally rub off more than you need to. Um, that's not too bad. Okay, so we'll just continue on. I'm just going to carefully, now you can take your time and obviously I'm doing this as a tutorial so I'm trying to go as quickly as I can. I'm trying to get rid of that ocean that's in the background there. Might even make this hardness stronger and the brush width size smaller again. Uh, let's go even smaller. Well, all the way back down to 10, a nice little one. You can see I'm getting the edge fairly hard now because I've got the hardness up to 72%. Just carefully 
I'll stop talking and just finish this off for you. Okay, and really, basically, it's as simple as that. Um, zoom that out there. And obviously, we need uh, to have more than just this invisible background. This um, check-looking thing, if you haven't seen that before, is just telling me that that's a, a transparent background. We want to put a background in. So for that, I'm going to create a, um, another layer, like the, the uh, Add Layer tool. Layer 3 is added, but it's in the wrong spot. I need it to be behind the photo, so I'm going to just um, push that down, move layer down. Now it becomes on the bottom. And what I think is always a good idea with these is, uh, firstly, we're going to crop using the rectangular mask tool. I'm just going to crop this photo back a little bit. In other words, select just the area I want in the photo, and then I'll just go up to Image Crop to Selection. That gives me that photo, and all I've got to do is put the background in. Now I tend, uh, in the ones that I've done in the past, I tend to use either a dark grey or a light grey um, at the back, moving to a lighter colour at the front. Um, just seems to make that up the pop stand out a bit more if there's a dark background against it, but you can use whatever colour you like, and I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Now I'm selecting the gradients tool. Now it's going to be going, the gradient's going to be going from grey to white. So I'm going to start at the back, make sure I'm on layer 3, which is underneath everything else. And slowly slide down here. And until I like the look of it. So that's basically it, I think. Um, that doesn't look too bad. I could go, you know, get really, really picky and zoom uh, right up. Oh, before I actually go to the pickiness, I'll just talk about the colour that I mentioned before. So currently the gradient colour is still selected. You can tell that by that dot there and that one there. And I've got going grey to white. I could try other colours. Let's put a blue in, seeing it's a blue background. Maybe that looks better. Don't know. You can tell me in the comments if you like. Um, you know, you could go crazy with this, just uh, playing around with the different colours to see what it looks like. Yeah, I think that blue is probably not too bad on this one. Uh, maybe a lighter blue. Or, uh, still not sure. I'll play around with this colour, move this around a little bit. Um, maybe, maybe something like that. I don't know. It's so hard to always. I'm going to go back to where the one I always stick with, which is just a grey. Maybe a darker grey. No, a lighter grey would be good. Oh, how indecisive, Mark. I'm going to hit Enter to get rid of the Gradients tool. And what I was talking about with the how picky you can be. Now, if we zoomed into this lighthouse and went right up here, you can still see the water through those windows. And, you know, we could zoom way in there and start deselecting these windows. Once you start that, though, you probably need to do them all, and that's quite time-consuming. So for this example, I won't bother. So basically, that's my finished... Um, finished picture, a pop-out where the image from the photo that you had is now sticking up out of the photograph. Um, you can see I've still got three layers. If I try to save this, it's going to want to save it as a PDN file um, or a, another file type where there are layers involved. That makes your photo way too big. So I'm just going to merge these layers down starting at the top. I'm just going to hit this one here, which is merge layer down. Merge that down, merge that down. Now I've just got a single layer, so that can now remain as the JPEG. I can either just save it, but that'll get rid of the original image. So I'm going to uh, instead do a save as. So file, save as. I'm going to go into my photos and go to my pop-out photos. And I'm going to resave this as Lighthouse. And that'll go there. Whoops, I've got Lighty House. That's not very smart. <laughs> my typing was never my forte. It's a JPEG file, and I'm going to save that. So there you go, and I'm saving the quality at 100%, so I don't lose anything. So uh, I'm just going to do one more quick thing before I go, and that's to show you, compare the two images, this, this image and the original one. 
So I'll go um, File, Open Recent, go to the original image, which was that, and now I've got it as a pop-out. That and a pop-out. Oh, I hope you get to try this for yourself. If you're good at Photoshop, you can probably do that in Photoshop even better than I can in this um, simple paint.net. But if you haven't got Photoshop, um, get paint.net. It's free to download and uh, have a play around, see what pop-outs you can create. Uh, even, you know, put them in the comments underneath if you can, and that way I'll get to see what you've learned and what you've created. So there you go. I'm sure you can do that with some of your drone photos, create that terrific pop-up effect where things appear to leap out of the photograph. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And as always, if you'd be kind enough to give me a thumbs up, that really does help my rankings. And if you're not subscribed to my channel yet, well, why not? <laughs> I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and uh, the notification bell as well. That way uh, you can join my community channel here and uh, learn things that as I learn them. I'll create tutorials for you and give you things that you can try to create your drone media um, concepts a little better and a little more interesting than perhaps they were before. Take care. Bye for now.